What's up, my brother? Good to see you, man. You look thank good, you, man. Thank you for having me on. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, brother. I mean, you've had me on your show a million times. So. Yeah, but I love having you on the show. Yes. I love having you, and I hope that you come back. But I'm very proud of you. I want this to work. We don't often get these opportunities. That's right. So congratulations and, and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I know it's going to be a hot conversation with you. So let Yeah. I saw you on the shop. And, yeah. And I really liked you on the shop. I like seeing you in those settings. And one thing you said, you spoke about being vulnerable while reporting. You said you have to be vulnerable because you have to be real. Expound on that. Anything that you do, you want to be successful in. Mm -hmm. I think the, you have to have a degree of authenticity. You have to love it, but you also have to be vulnerable because you need people to see who you really are. And you've got to be real. I think for me, it's just like being an artist. Yeah. Right? We're, I think journalists are a reflection of the times. Do you catch yourself off guard when you cry on air? I do because it, it happens at the weirdest times. Like you don't expect it. And then I say, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. Then I, I end up doing it. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's always very real. Like, you know, yeah. I, Sometimes just in the just for no reason I'll do it. Like you know, when someone dies, I, yeah. I feel passionate about it. Well, that is a reason, Don. Well, yes, it is. I, like, but I was trying to when. <laughs> I, that's a good answer. <laughs> it's a great reason. I that's have. right. <laughs> but um, you know, like when Aretha died, because yeah, yeah, Aretha yeah, was yeah. my friend, and I was just like, I was trying to get through the show and and um, not cry. Or you know, you guys just in the panel talked about the election of Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. uh, not perfect. Um, the best option. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the time for the country. has nothing to do with being Democrat or Republican, but we needed sanity uh, in that office. And, you know, when he came out on the stage and said that this is a, that everyone um, was welcome in his administration of all different backgrounds, ethnicities, um, sexualities, and all that, I was like, mm -hmm. yay. And so that was an emotional moment for me. But usually you don't want to cry because people think that journalists are supposed to sit there and anchor people and be like automatons. Yeah. I don't think we're in that time anymore. In your opinion, what's the biggest challenge journalism faces? Oof. You don't have all night, Don, but you know. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. I think that journalists have to realize that the time that we're in a democracy, our democracy is in threat. We have been yes. fighting um, to keep our democracy for the last seven years. It's gonna be hard for journalists to be able to tell the truth in the environment that we're in. We have lost so many local mm. reporters. Um, local news agencies, everything is aggregated now. We're all owned by big companies. Every so I'm speaking of everyone, no one specifically in general. I'm not pointing out anyone. But I think as journalists, we um, are the gatekeepers for our democracy, and we also write what the, the first draft and the last draft, usually, of history. Mm -hmm. And so we have to, we're going to have to be able to do that, and um, that's going to be tough because we have to hold the powerful accountable. Sometimes the powerful are people who look like us. That's right. Sometimes the powerful are people who may have our same sort of political um, bent or whatever we think about politics. Sometimes the powerful uh, can even be the companies who own us and mm -hmm. the people who are in charge of us. And we have to hold them accountable as well. And I think that's going to be tough in this environment because when the truth does not um, line up with what a certain group of people are saying, then they tend to attack journalists because we are the messengers that's and right. we are holding them accountable. So I think that's going to be the biggest thing. And especially for people who look like me and you, now that there are more diverse voices, the people who are in charge are not used to that. And so we have a different relationship with America than they might have. That's right. And we're going to have to be true to who we are because if it wasn't for journalists who were out there fighting, we would not have the right, the opportunity to vote wouldn't have the opportunity to sit in these spaces, wouldn't have the opportunity to be on the front of a bus or a that's plane right. and all. So I think that's why that's gonna be the biggest challenge. Can you imagine having to call out your bosses? Can you imagine being, having yes, to do that? Yes, I have, but I've been you, fired four times too. So. Yeah, I know, but you understand that. But yeah, yeah. We're at a very critical time right now where our democracy is, uh, is being challenged and threatened, and so we have to live up to that moment as journalists. I saw you say that Republicans must be treated as a danger to society by media. You said they cannot be coddled. How does the media... Well, I didn't say that public, Republicans must be treated. I think that was a headline. That's okay. another problem that's with journalism. Everything is aggregated now, and so people sort of write what a headline is or whatever. That's not what I said. I said that we there shouldn't be a false equivalence between what Democrats 
Democrats are doing and what Republicans are doing. Gotcha. I said Republican, what Republicans are doing, for the most part, and I mean leadership. Mm -hmm. Republicans, uh, leadership, what they're doing now is dangerous for our democracy and our country by leaning into uh, and often promoting white nationalism. White supremacy. White supremacy yeah, yeah. and white nationalism. Um, by uh, you know trying to um, get rid of the levers in our democracy that that keep us being a democracy, that's what I meant by that. And I don't mean every single Republican, for the most part, Republican leaderships and people who are not standing up when the Republican Party does crazy, you know what? Like you, you simply talking about right and wrong. That's all. We're talking about right and wrong, yeah. um, but we're also talking about the truth and we're talking about living in reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Chris Lit who was an EP on this show last season. That's my guy. He's the yeah. new head of CNN. He wants to shift CNN from uh, opinion-based partisanship news to a political center. Will you still be able to call it like it is? So let, let me just say, I don't, I don't think that's exactly what Chris is saying. I think that's a narrative that has been uh, placed in the media. I think what Chris wants to do is to be able to have Republicans and Democrats and whatever your political stance is on CNN so that you can be accountable and that you can answer for it. Um, so, yes, I will be able to do what I do on CNN. And okay. if I'm not allowed to be able to tell, which is to tell the truth, which is to uh, inform the American electorate and the American public and also the world because we're an international news organization. So if, if I'm not allowed to do that, then I will go on and do it somewhere else. But um, I don't think that that's exactly oh, you, what You'd be willing to walk if they uh, stifled you like that? And I don't mean just CNN. If yeah. people don't allow journalists to be journalists, because, again, we hold the powerful accountable. We um, question, question heads of state, the leader of the free world, kings, queens, dictators. That is what our jobs are. Mm -hmm. to do. We're, that's what we're supposed to do. So why would it be any different for us to do it for the people who are in charge of us? To question what they're doing, to hold them accountable, to make sure that you know, they are doing what is right, even if they are the people who, are, who hire us. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, one thing I do miss, I, ha I have to admit I do miss this, I miss the handoff between you and Chris Cuomo. Why? <laughs> For one thing, because you used to say, I love you, brother. Yeah. And he would say, I love you, brother. Yeah. And it was something about seeing a black man and a white man on television doing that that was right. like, wow. You know, especially during the time of, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement and everything like that. Do you, yeah. do you still love him? Of course. Okay. Of course. I love everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course that I still is, that's love what, That's what you tell a, a woman when you're really done with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Well, you forget. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. But, yeah. yeah. He, he, says yeah. He, he says he feels like you should have called him. Do you feel like that? Um, I should have called him for what? I don't, I don't know what... I don't, I don't know the context because I don't know what yeah. he said, but I, don't, I have no idea. Well, I guess after everything happened with him, um, I, I had spoken to Chris for a, a while. I mean, okay. I, you know, this, I don't believe that that's true. I don't know what he said. I haven't heard what he said, but I, I don't know. I, that's not true. Got you. I don't want to end on that note. You did say something. You want to <laughs> play <laughs> Mary Kill? <laughs> you want to do something fun? Are you trying to get me in trouble? <laughs> <laughs>